Sovereign, KCBS. Hi, Governor. Thanks. Um, you know, it was only a decade ago that, that a lot of people would describe California as ungovernable, and now a growing number say it's unlivable. I, I personally know several people who have decided to move to other states. They just had enough of worsening wildfires and rolling blackouts and smoky days when their kids can't go outside and there are ads airing on our radio station now for a company serving people who want to leave the Bay Area. What do you say to the people who are ready to give up on California? Uh, I've, I've lived here half a century. I've heard this pretty much every decade. You referenced a decade ago, and in this last decade, we've been enjoying uh, economic prosperity, the likes of which few states have enjoyed. Last five years, 3.8 percent average GDP growth, 120 consecutive months of net job creation, record surpluses, record reserves, record level of business startups, innovation, more scientists, more researchers, more Nobel laureates in this state than any other state in this nation. All of that remains finest system of higher education anywhere in the world. The balance sheet of this state is extraordinary. Our competitiveness is second to none. The international status that we enjoy as a brand and our capacity to compete also uh, is best of class. And so I'm very long this state, very confident in our ability to continue to prosper well into the future. And I would encourage you and many others just to look back as an example, a proof point, a point of reference to a edition of Time magazine that was done in 1994. The entire special edition was saying California's best days are behind it. They talked about the mass exodus. They talked about wildfires in this state. They talked about other things that were rather curious as it relates to the diversity uh, of our state at the time and some of the xenophobia and nativism that was alive and well. Uh, we recovered as a state. We worked through that, as we always do. Uh, I saw today there was a happiness index put out California remaining one of the happiest states uh, for individuals to live in in the United States of America. So we're challenged at this time, as every state in this country challenged at this time, and states that haven't uh, had to struggle through this pandemic and the economic consequences are beginning to struggle through this uh, pandemic and its economic consequences. I was uh, on the phone the other day uh, and listening in uh, to the governor of Colorado. They were talking about historic wildfires in their majestic state. It's not unique to California, the West Coast of the United States, uh, being impacted uh, by these challenges, by these conditions. But as I always say, and forgive me, I'll say it yet again, it's our decisions, not conditions, that determine our fate and future. And I have confidence in our capacity to compete, to thrive, not just survive, in the next number of years. Uh, and I would just encourage folks that are leaving uh, to consider uh, the fact uh, that this state six, seven months ago uh, was dominating in so many different sectors, and those core tenets of the state remain still as alive and enlivened as they ever have been, despite some of these situational challenges that we face. Adam Bean, AP. Thank you, Governor. I have two questions. First of all, uh, what's the latest on the reopening plan for Disneyland and other theme parks? And secondly, when it relates to this new equity metric, uh, some county officials have uh, voiced concern that this metric might hold them back from reopening businesses or schools at a time when reopening could bring an economic boost to their communities. I'm just curious why uh, your administration is introducing this metric at this time, and if you, are you concerned at all that it could slow economic recovery? Well, we introduced the construct of the metric when we put out the tiered status. In fact, it was part of the original presentation, uh, the original announcement. So it's not particularly new. But I would just say this. If you believe in growth and you don't believe in inclusion, then we're going to leave a lot of people behind. And one of the things we value as a state is inclusion, and we believe that we're all better off when we're all better off. Leaving communities behind in order to gain your testing and your case rates, I don't think is right. And so our approach is about making sure that we are doing justice to our diverse communities and that we're not just gaming a system to paint a much more rosy picture that may be for some, but not all members of a community, particularly a specific county. Now, as it relates to your specific frame that some counties are concerned, you'll hear tomorrow uh, Dr. Galley will come out with the new updates on the tiered uh, status in the movement. Uh, and our broad strokes belief think uh, looks to be in this frame, meaning 
the equity measure, interestingly, may help advance the cause of reopening in some states because some counties are actually doing more in that respect and that's being counted in to their capacity to move more expeditiously through the tier. So in fact, it may be something that advantages an economic opening, but does so in a way that brings more people uh, to light and more inclusion to bear. And so we believe that a core value and we believe this framework is an appropriate one. Jeremy White, Politico. Hey, Governor, uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, Going to ask the thing that I think is on everyone's minds, which is who you are picking to get to the World Series this year. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, as you noted, ballots have gone out uh, around the state today. I know you've been busy with bill signings and budget stuff, but I'm curious to know, can we expect to see you hitting the trail for ballot initiatives you've endorsed or for uh, congressional candidates or the president um, in the coming weeks? No, I, well, I appreciate that question, and it's, it's one that I've had – a uh, number of people have asked me, and we just haven't made the determination. So I think you framed it, and I appreciate you framing it as you did as it relates to what we've had to address in terms of bill signing, uh, some of these wildfires, addressing, trying to get the stability, addressing the issues related to transmission of COVID. So campaigning politics has not been top of my mind. That said, now that the ballots have dropped, now that we are moving into this final sprint in this last month, I recognize the imperative and importance of that. Uh, we'll make some assessment and determination, but my fundamental responsibility, my top priority is my job governing the state of California, not campaigning uh, for others to the extent campaigning for causes that impact and benefit the state of California, uh, we certainly uh, look forward to doing more and saying more in that space. Final question, Angela Hart, Kaiser Health News. Thank you, Governor. Um, the president's positive COVID test has raised some questions about your own COVID testing. Just wanted to ask you, so previously on a few occasions, you've said that you did not want to get tested to preserve those tests, and then later you were tested, which turned out negative. So. Um, how many times have you been tested in total, um, and what were the results? Um, are you regularly tested? Uh, and I'm also wondering if you're planning on perhaps changing your thinking about this approach, uh, given uh, the president's uh, positive test. Yeah, no, we continue to practice what we preach in terms of mask wearing and relating to issues of uh, a highly vulnerable uh, events and communities, be it visiting prisons or meeting with the president himself a few weeks back. Uh, those were appropriate places to be tested, uh, protocols well established. Uh, so we'll continue to maintain our vigilance. We'll continue uh, not to send mixed messages as it relates to importance and the imperative of wearing masks or minimize the impact uh, of this disease on people's health and uh, lives that are lost. And we'll continue to update people as it relates to uh, the health of our state and the health of this economy. Uh, and as it relates to my health, uh, we've been tested on multiple occasions, tested negative, And if I was tested positive, I would have the responsibility and you would have the right to know, and that would be forthcoming. Well, with that, let me thank all of you uh, for uh, your responsiveness to this pandemic and the good work that all of you have done, 40 million of us strong, uh, that have once again moved these transmission rates down. I should just note in closing that the 2.6% seven-day positivity rate is the lowest we have recorded in the state since April. That's very encouraging, but again, we're seeing a plateauing of the rate of decline. And we're seeing parts of the state that continue uh, to struggle as it relates to the R effective and as it relates to the transmission uh, of this disease. And that's why it's incumbent upon all of us to be vigilant uh, and maintain the status of all the hard work that you have advanced to continue it so we can get through this, get to a vaccine. Take care, everybody.